Hey guys, what's going on and welcome back to a brand new video and today we are going to be going over Sergio Gonzi Sal's 442. I hope I've said that right, I do apologise if I've messed that up. Never actually done too much research on this guy before, so it's why it's taken quite a while to make, because I have been spending quite a lot of time getting used to this guy's system, how he plays, and then recreating it inside of the game. But if you guys do like these tactics, then please do leave a like on this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications, this way you're never going to miss an upload when I go live, and also when I do a community post, which I do quite a few of them as well. But let's get in to this tactic and break it down. So, before we do actually break the tactic down, obviously we like to go and you know, view the results, talk a little bit about the manager himself, and also look at some in-game 2D sort of analysis. So, to start with, I'm going to be straight with you. I look at all of the suggestions you guys give me. If I don't know much about the manager, I'll go and watch his games, I'll go and do research on him, and I'll try and replicate it inside of a game. Um, and this guy, I didn't know too much about. The name did ring a bell. Obviously, he's actually been... Quite a successful manager, to be fair. Um, very popular at the moment, that is for sure. I know about five to six people suggested to do this manager, so definitely a manager which I did want to get around to doing. Um, from what I've what I've learned from what I've seen online, obviously, um, and also watching a few of like the highlights from games and stuff like that, he does use quite a high pressing sort of style of play, short passing as well. Um, the four four two is a system which he does use quite frequently, and it's one which I think is very. I like it. I do like it. It's a bit different to what I'd use a 442 and how it would use, because a lot of 442s are quite negative, to be honest. But with this one, it is quite an attacking, quite an in your face, sort of aggressive 442, which you don't see too much of. A lot of the 442s nowadays are set up to be sort of resilient, defend, hit them on the counter, etc. etc. Um, obviously, one that comes to mind would be like a um Claudio Ranieri's tactic, or even the Alex Ferguson one did have a little bit of you know firepower, but this is really aggressive, really in your face. So what I've done is I picked out three teams to test with. We're going to be testing with Porto, Braga, and Lazio. Um we're going to start off by testing with Lazio, um, just to switch things up, you know, why not? We'll start with Lazio, see how we do, and hopefully this tactic can bring us some results. So, we tested with Lazio, and it was a massive success at the end of the day. We managed to win the Serie A in the first season, obviously, and also win in the Coppa Italia versus Milan. Is that going to be AC Milan in this occasion? And runners-up in Europa League final against RB Leipzig, scoring 104 goals, ranking us the best, and only conceding 30, ranking us the best in that as well. Now, in terms of actual player stats... Um, I am going to be speeding this segment up of the videos because I do feel like this is a segment which I do sometimes go in a little bit too much detail about. So we're going to go over to competitions and we're just going to simply see the top goal scorer. Obviously got 27 coming in from Pedro in the league, which is incredible. Um, highest amount of assists coming in from Immobile with 17. In the Europa League, we've got 15 goals and 8 assists. And in the Coppa Italia, we've got 9 goals. 9 of goals? 9 goals for Immobile and 3 assists for Zakani. Now, as we saw here, right from the front the front screen, we're going to have 45 goals overall coming from Immobile. So he does take the top goal scoring spot. And I think that's fair enough. I mean, he was a player which you probably would put your money on getting it inside of this team. But in terms of the actual data hub, so team attacking, we're going to be looking at quite impressive, to be honest. Goals per game sitting at 2.74, a little bit higher than what the expected was as well. Pass completion actually does going to does going to, is going to be breaking in past 92%. So this 100% here is the highest pass completion tactic I've ever released. So definitely a tactic for you guys if you are a very big fan of doing them short pass moves. This is going to be the tactic for you guys. Team defending then, again, very impressive considering obviously it is quite an aggressive system. 0.79 goals conceded a game, so obviously under a goal a game. Score on over two goals as well, which is very good. So it's a very good balance. Tackle win ratio sitting pretty much at 70 five percent just a little bit under but still very impressive um again you are going to pick up the occasional foul because it is such an intense press so mistakes will be made you will clip the player here and there but at the end of the day you concede an under a goal or you concede a 0.8 say and you're scoring 0.7 so i mean it's definitely a system which is going to be majority of the time successful and obviously 
you guys can feel free to tweak it in a game if you feel like you need to go more attacking go more attacking more defending go more defending but do let me know in the comments right now if you agree with what i said about speeding up the sort of player stats because i noticed my tactic videos are quite long compared to everyone else's and i do spend a lot of time going over every single stat here if that's something you guys do like seeing every single time then do let me know but i feel like if we just go over here we can obviously see the overall goals and then we can get right into the tactic a little bit quicker but before we do do that let's hop over to the next test which is going to be with braga so with braga unfortunately we didn't manage to win the league but we did finish in second place won the tacker to portugal placard and also the super tacker there so and the Allianz cup actually so to be fair to us um that is a treble winning season just not including the actual league title 108 goals scored only 19 conceded as well so very good stats there top goal scorer this current season is going to be vitinha pretty sure we could have banked on putting money on that one most assists as well from um, vitinha 99 pass completion from bruno rodriguez if we go into the um competition screen sorry we're going to actually see we can break down these goal scorers so we've got abel ruiz and vitinha both scoring 30 goals um, most assists is going to be Medeiros and Abel Ruiz. In terms of Europa League, um, knocked out in the quarters, by the way, to Frank, though, which is a little bit disappointing. 11 goals for Ruiz and 10 assists for Vitinha. Um, the Taka de Portugal placard, we've got 8 for Vitinha and most assists for Vitinha being definitely the best player in this save. Or probably just as good as Abel. They both had really, really good seasons. Allianz Cup, you've got 6 goals for Vitinha and 3 assists for Medeiros. Super Taka, you're looking at just the goal because obviously, you know, it's not exactly a big tournament, is it? Just the game. So, I mean, overall, very good player stats. How did the team get on, though? And that is what we're going to look at. So, team attacking, even better this time around. 3.18 goals scored a game. So, I mean, over three goals a game is something which is very hard to get inside of a football manager tactic at the end of the day, unless you literally do go completely all out attack. And this isn't all out attack. So to be scoring over three goals a game is very impressive. I think that's slightly better pass completion, 92.33%. So again, very, very high when it comes to that. In terms of conceding, even better again, 0.56 conceded a game. Tackle win ratio, again, sitting at under 75 but I did say you are going to pick up the occasional foul. It is an intense press. You see it time and time again where a player goes to win the ball, possibly clips them. So if you do feel like you're picking up too many bookends, then this is something you can tweak yourself. You can tell them not to get stuck in as much, but to fully replicate this system, this is how it's going to play. And even with them bookends, I mean, the stats are really, really going in our favour. And to be honest... The yellow cards weren't an issue to be honest we were only we were the fifth best out of obviously 18 teams so we didn't even get too many yellow cards red cards we only got one in the entire season which considering how this tactic does play aggressively is actually very good so i would say the two tactics or the two sorry the two saves we've tested with this tactic so far have been massive successes before we do get into the porto tactic test guys please do leave a like on this video and please do subscribe to the channel. And if you guys do want to support this channel any further, I've just updated all of my member perks. So if you guys do want to become a member of this channel, I'll leave a link in the description, but that is entirely up to you. But there are some really cool perks on pretty much on display now. So if you guys are interested, link is listed below. But let's go over to another Portuguese test, which is going to be with Porto. Now, with Porto, we actually did manage to win the league. So we won the league. We also won the Placard again and the Allianz Cup. So that is going to be a treble winning season, um, which is still very, very impressive. 130 goals scored, only 15 conceded. Um, certainly more yellow cards with this side. Avalison coming in with 46 goals. Franco with 27 assists. Um, David Carmo coming in, or David Carmo coming in with 99% of pass completion. Um, in terms of the competitions, so we've got 31 for Evelinson. I hope I'm saying that right. I do apologize if I'm not. Um, Franco with most assists with 20. UEFA Champions League, not doubt in the quarters to Manchester United. They have got a very good side, so not too annoyed about that one. Top goal scorer is going to be Mehdi Taremi, do apologise, and João Mario with most assists with four assists. In the Taka Blackard, we have got six goals coming in for Tony Martinez and Andre Franco with six assists there. Moving over to the last tournament, which we actually did win, the Allianz Cup, we are going to have nine goals for Evans. 
Avanson. I'm really, I don't know how I was struggling to pronounce that name so much. And four assists coming in for Galeno. If anyone in the comments can actually educate me on how to say that, please do, because this guy is really good. Very, very good player. But in terms of actual team stats, then, again, this is getting on for nearly four goals a game, guys. You really do need to test this tactic because this is outrageous. 3.82 goals a game scored. Pass completion, nearly getting on for 93% there. In terms of team defending, we're going to have 0.4 actually conceded with this system, 0.49 expected. So even expected is very, very, you know, low, still under half a goal a game, if you want to word it like that. Tackle win ratio, slightly higher, basically 78%. So less fouls of this side. I don't know why that is. Nothing got tweaked. So probably just a cleaner side. I'm not entirely sure. Or probably because we dominated the ball a lot more with this side, because obviously it's a bit of a better team. Um, so we probably were forced less to go into those aggressive challenges all the time. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pick out a game from... I might do the Lazio one. I'm going to pick out a game from the Lazio save. I'm going to go into an actual game and see how this lines up and how it plays. So this is going to be how it does line up in game. It obviously is going to be a traditional 4-4-2. So you're going to have your four at the back here. You're then going to obviously have your four in midfield here. Um, which are going to be these two centre midfielders here. And obviously a Mobile and also Pedro, who is playing as a second striker in this system. Now, what we're going to do is with this, because I want you to focus more on how the pass and play is. We are going to watch the goals, but we're actually going to watch the entire key highlights because I feel like we're going to get a chance to really see how this system does play. So we're going to start off and it's actually going to look what could be the first goal. There is a little bit of pressing here. As you can you see, all of them players there pressed towards the ball. It's going to go back into Sempo, obviously their goalkeeper. Goes along with it. Looks like we do intercept it. We do with Romag Nogli into Zakani, into Alberto, into a Mobile. Beautiful ball into Pedro, who does go past the goalkeeper and tucks it in. Now, with this system, I'm going to quickly pause this because I don't want you guys to miss it. Um, you are going to be playing beautiful short pass and football. But also, as you saw there, when there is a semi-long ball on, I know it wasn't a complete long ball over the top, but when there he you know, got into the pocket of space there, your strikers are going to occasionally hit a long pass because they link up so well together. And it's one of the one of the big things that I really enjoyed using this tactic was because of how good it did link up. Like it wasn't only the short pass and it was fun to watch. Um, it was also the fact of how good we were at finding the long runners. And I feel like that's a big part of football where it's good to play this short tiki taka based football, but you also do need to be able to have it in you to say, okay, we do need to go long here. And that wasn't like ridiculously long, but obviously Pedro made a beautiful run in behind and Mobile found him with a slightly more direct pass than probably what a lot of managers would want their players to be doing. But if it's on, I'm a big advocate in saying go for it. I really am. So it's going to be them here with the ball here. Volacalio into Goodmanson. Motta with the ball. Again, a little gentle press coming on here from number 23. But Hijaj goes back into the midfield, into Strootman. To be honest, we do get split open there. I'm going to be straight honest with you. I'm lucky it didn't come to anything. But we are seeing several stages of how this press does sort of interact. Us down the left-hand side here again. Are we going to cut it back? It's a poor pass. They then get the ball. But again, looks like we're going to intercept that one. Again, they're forced into playing this long ball here. We've got Narasic, number 77, into Alberto. Again, you see in these beautiful triangle passes. And this is, again, with the long ball. Um, a fantastic run from Felipe Anderson, who goes through and sticks it in the left. But if we actually go back, um, which I am going to do, we can see this beautiful passage of play here. So look at the triangle. Look at the triangle foreman. So here you go. This is your triangle. So he plays it in, Luis Alberto again, into the last part of the triangle, over the top, into Anderson, into the corner. Triangles win games. That's a weird quote, but they do. Triangles, hexagons, whatever shape you're passing in, you need a good shape with space and width, and this is what it provides. And that is why we find ourselves 2-0 up. Another passage of play here with Pedro, just playing the ball about really nicely. Another little ball over the top, unfortunately didn't work out there. They then try and go on the press, on the counter-attack with Motta. Quite a dangerous team we're playing here, to be honest with you. Um, playing some good stuff themselves and hitting the bar there. But to be fair, we dealt with everything. Obviously that one... Again, a good foot in there to win the ball back, sort of getting aggressive on him. Pedro down the line here, another little cheeky ball over the top. Nothing too much coming to that. Again, very good awareness, good pressing on the ball, off the ball there to win it back. So going into the last two goals, then we're going to see a bit of build-up play from Calaseri here with the ball. Beautiful run, actually. Goes through the whole team and actually scores fair play to him. There is a very, very 
poor press from that side there in Genoa. Completely just letting bomb through the entire team. Pedro out wide with the ball here. Cuts it across into Ferez. Is he going to chop it back? He is all the way across into Calasiri. Again, a player which I just love to use in this save. Now, I think this system, honestly, is one of the best tactics I've seen in terms of not only putting the ball in the net, but the, the passing you play. This 2D analysis didn't really do it enough justice. I think the only way we're going to see it is if you were to watch a whole game, which obviously we don't have time for. But in terms of actual build-up play, guys, this is really, really good to use. You're going to see a lot of short passes, but we've also seen the side of the game, which I did want you guys to see, which is the side of where if a long pass is on, you are going to be hitting them long balls. And it works so often because when we saw on this side of the pitch, I don't know why I'm moving my hands, on this side of the pitch, um, that short triangle passing was really nice. But then as soon as it got to the last connector here, he literally thumped the ball over the top into the ongoing runner, and that's an easy goal. And the reason why these triangles work so well is because everyone gets sucked into them. All the players on the other team are sort of wondering how to get the ball back from that triangle. You saw loads of them out of position here trying to win the ball back. If you can get out of the triangle, which we done, and completely send one of your forward players in, that's a very good chance of getting in behind. And that is what we've done on several occasions. Several occasions. But... Let's get into your favorite part of the video, which is going to be the tactic breakdown. So going over the tactic, then we're firstly going to go over what we love to do, which is not going to be the player roles first. We're going to go over the mentality, obviously set to positive, because again, this is quite an attack and formation, guys. In terms of possession, you want to have much shorter passing, much higher on the tempo, very narrow on the attack and width, play out of defense, work ball into the box and also be more expressive. In terms of in transition, we're going to have nothing selected for when it's been lost, counter for when it's been won, distribute to the fullbacks, the centre backs, and obviously the other fullback, left back, right back, centre backs, and take short goal kicks. Out of possession, you want a high defensive line, high line of engagement, and standard with defensive width. Prevent short goalkeeper distribution is selected, trigger presses on much more often, and get stuck in is also selected with the offside trap. Now, before we do get into the player roles, guys, if you do want to simply download this tactic, it is always in the description. So for anyone that has been watching these and copying it for click, for click, for click, you can save yourself probably like 10 minutes. Go into the description, download the tactic from Mediafire, simply click load. It will open up all your computer files and then you can simply click it. Everything will come over. Set pieces, player roles, tactic, absolutely everything. Just want to give you that heads up in case some people are still doing it the old fashioned way. Now, in terms of player roles, sweeper keeper on the defensive duty, nothing special selected for this guy at all, to be honest with you. In terms of the right back, we're going to have him on or fullback on the automatic role, balance press, get further forward, stay wider, run wide, shorter passing, and aim the crosses at the center. For the left back, again, it's going to be exactly the same get further forward, stay wider balanced on the press, run wide with the ball, shorter passing and aim the crosses at the centre. The two centre backs, we, a lot of systems play this. You've got one um, sort of just central defender, which we're going to cover first. For him, you just want him on balance with the press, shorter passing, and that is it. And next to him, full playing defender. On defender as well, you don't want him getting too aggressive. Um, for him, very, very, he's pretty much the same. It is trigger press on balanced and shorter passing. This back sort of four isn't the most attacking because it doesn't have to be we've got two attacking well, we've got the attacking wide um, playmaker here and obviously an inverted wing here on the attack duty so they don't need to be that attacking they will contribute with assists and goals um obviously they will as we did see with the stats but it's not purely focused on them getting assists because we already have two very good wingers that are pretty much contributing a lot more attacking than defending in this system. So on the right hand side, we've got an inverted winger on the attack duty. We've got them balanced on the press, get further forward, cut inside with the ball, shorter passing and take more risks. On the left side, we've got a wide playmaker just because it offers a little bit something different. So balanced on the press, sit narrower, cut inside with the ball, shorter passing and that is going to be it. Everything else gets automatically applied when you select the duty and the roll. Two midfielders then, you definitely need the ball with a midfielder because that is going to be the cement for the midfield. On the defend duty, you want him on balanced on the press and standard with the directness. This guy doesn't have to be short passing because this is where you will see the occasional long ball being played. So 
Next to him, central midfielder on the automatic duty. Basically, this guy, it basically means he's going to get up the pitch. He's going to get back as well. For me, this was a lot better than having a Metzala. A Metzala was way too attacking, in my opinion. But in terms of player instructions, you want to have balanced on the press, get further forward, move into channels, hold position, short a passing, dribble more, and take more risks. Going over to the goal scorers then. You want one pressing forward on the support duty, which is going to be told to move into channels, roam from position, stand with the pass and directness and hold up the ball, and trigger press on much more often for this one. Obviously, his duty is to press high up the field. Next to him, you want a complete forward on the attack roll, balanced on the press, hold up the ball, stand in directness, and shoot more often. So what's going to happen here is you're going to have one striker here who is more of a support striker, will score goals, but he is pretty much pressing all up these high areas of the field. This guy here, the main striker, is the goal scorer. He will work hard as well, but this one here is definitely more of the support striker. So in my personal opinion, I would put the slightly better striker in terms of finishing in this role here, and the one that's a bit more agile in this role here. But that is going to be this tactic broken down, guys. As I said before, if you guys do want to save yourself a lot of time, you can simply just click download and you haven't got to click this click for click and it will save you a lot of time. But from my end, guys, that is going to be the end of the video. I feel like we've covered absolutely everything with this tactic. I know I had a lot of fun making it. If you guys have enjoyed watching, I hope you have. Then please do leave a like on this video. Please do subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. But that is going to be it for me today, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.